Hi everyone, this is Claudia God and Claudia God Speaks. Today I'm going to be talking to you about now the enemy of our faith. Now, as in now, the enemy of our faith. Praise the Lord. And um, basically this topic is just points to our need to have our gratifications, our prayers answered, our requests granted, as in now. I think, I believe that a lot of us know exactly what I'm talking about. I see that this is a problem that's prevalent amongst the body of Christ. And um, those of us, us that know how to connect with God, um, I think this is one of the challenge uh, challenges that we face, you know, every single one of us. You know, um, we have a problem, we've prayed to God, we've done everything we need to do, but why are we not seeing the answers right now, right away? I know many of us can testify and the Lord will help us. I'm, I'm praying that through this ministration, the Lord will speak to our hearts and reveal certain things to us that will help us on our journey and help us to, um, in, you know, as we, as we trust in the Lord, as we wait on him, that it would help us to, in the process, and understand things from God's perspective. And the Lord will help us indeed in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Um, as I usually do, I would start with just about a minute of worship just to usher in God's presence and we'll get right into the word. Praise God. Hallelujah. <clears throat> oh, faithful God. Oh, faithful God. You lift me up and you uphold my cause. You gave me life, you wiped my tears, you're always there, you are faithful God. Oh, faithful God, oh, faithful God, you lift me up and you uphold my cause. You gave me life, you wiped my tears, you're always there, you are faithful God, and I'm forever grateful to you, and I'm forever grateful for the cross. And I'm forever grateful to you that you came to seek and save the lost. And I'm forever grateful to you. And I'm forever grateful for the cross. And I'm forever grateful to you that you came to seek and save the lost. Hallelujah. Faithful God, faithful God, faithful God. I reverence you this evening, Lord. I worship you and I honor you and exalt you and glorify you and praise you and thank you and adore you for all of your goodness, all of your kindness, all of your faithfulness. Lord, even as we're about to get into this word, Father, may I diminish in your very presence. May these words be all of your words. Have your way, O oh God. I bless you, Lord, and I thank you for such an opportunity. And I thank you for my brother, my sister, on the other side of this platform. Lord, I thank you, Lord, that right now, Father, you're speaking, you're beginning to even speak in their hearts, O oh God. Lord, you would minister to them even in the course of Lord of, of sharing of this time of sharing you minister to their hearts you minister to their spirits Lord I pray that you meet them at the point of need may they not leave this meeting the same Lord let your blessings descend upon them O oh God Lord may they hear your voice and your voice only O oh Lord in all of this that your name may be glorified in Jesus name amen hallelujah praise the Lord hallelujah so like I said we're sharing on now the enemy of our faith now, to obtain the promise, we need to mix faith, love, and guess what? 
patience yes patience patience that is the thing that i don't know if i like to hear it and i'm sure you do not like to hear it there's just something about patience when you need that answer right now and that's why we're having um this time of discussion and the lord will help us praise god i have a scripture here it says faith works with patience faith works with patience is that really yes let's go to james james chapter 1 verse 3 praise the lord and i have it opened up here in my bible so i'm going to actually start from verse 2 it says consider it a great joy my brothers and sisters whenever you experience various trials because you know that the testing of your faith produces endurance some scriptures say patience and let endurance have its full effect so that you may be mature and complete, lacking nothing. You may be mature and complete, lacking nothing. Lacking nothing. Faith working with patience in trials. What is a trial? A trial is when you're going through something that is very uncomfortable. You want to be done with it. You don't like it. It's uncomfortable. You feel miserable. You're wondering, why is this happening to me? Where is God in this? You know, you're praying you know but it's, it's still sitting there that is a trial very uncomfortable i know it you know it and the lord will help us in jesus name praise the lord so another scripture that i have here is we walk not by sight but by faith that one that one is pretty popular we walk not by sight but by faith we walk not by what we're seeing but by faith and for us, that's a huge, huge, huge challenge. I think a lot of people don't feel like they're there. How can this be happening to me? And you say, I shouldn't give this report. I should be, shouldn't be moved in my emotions by what I see, but just by faith. What is that? You know, I know oftentimes we've felt um, pressure to ask that question. You mean you see maybe uh, your loved one is this sick and you don't, you, you shouldn't walk by sight, just trust God, really, you know, or you're laid off work and the bills are piling in and don't just walk by faith, really, where is God? You know, I know this is a question we've all asked, or you've, um, you're advanced in age and you're a lady, you haven't, where is the guy, where is the, I've been trusting God, don't walk by sight, how can I not walk by sight? When I feel lonely, how can I not walk by sight when I want my female needs to be met? How can I walk not walk by sight when my biological clock is ticking? You know, how can I? Those are questions, you know, and I understand that those are questions that we ask. And I understand that as a human being, you know, and I totally do. And the Lord even more understands those, right? Praise the Lord. And we're going to talk about a little bit about somebody that walked the same in the same shoes as we did. Praise the Lord. Now, I'm going to be reading Romans 4, 20 and 21. This is our father and father, father of faith, Abraham. That's the one I'm going to be talking about just for a little bit. It says, Abraham staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, strong in faith, giving glory to God. And Abraham being fully persuaded that what the Lord had promised, he was, going to, he was going to perform. Now, if we read through the story of Abraham, we gather that when God first, first gave him the promise of um, his son Isaac, he was about 75, and this was at Haran, right? The son of promise, he was given to him at 75. And we understand that that son didn't come until 25 years later. Abraham turned 100 years, so it took him 25 years waiting on the Lord and see what God had to say about him. You know, God, you can tell God is proud of him. And now we call him father of our faith, right? Um, he said, the Bible says he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. And he was fully persuaded. That's my most favorite part there. Fully persuaded that what the Lord had promised, he was going to perform. You know, I think if we didn't even study anything, we've gotten everything out of the scripture. You know, I'm just going to pull one or two things here, a couple of things that I, I'm sure that are also obvious to you. Abraham staggered not at the promise of God. So he, the fact that they're even mentioning it means that was, he had that option, right? To waver and wonder, you know, 
hmm, you know, did God really know what he was saying? Did he already know I was kind of uh, um, advanced in age? I'm an older guy. Um, he's, but the Bible says he staggered not through unbelief. So I, the way I look at it, I think it's a resolution that is up to us. He, he could have chosen to not believe God. That's why everyone's not Abraham in the Bible, right? There's not like all the characters in the Bible are Abraham. It means he was one guy that singled himself out to trust God, to stay focused, to stay focused. He had ample reasons, not just himself, even his wife. We know typically when you're already like, what, 35, 36, they already, doctors are already telling you all the things you can do and how you're high risk, etc. Now imagine his wife being advanced in age, her, her age being advanced in age and having to want to believe in their 70s, 70s through close to 100, having to want to believe that she would have a, she could have a child. So I don't know if anything can stretch us more than that, you know. So what I want to encourage us here is if Abraham as a model man as us could hold on to God and not stagger in faith and believe God's word, we can. It's a choice. It's a choice. And I, if you look at the story, you see clearly something. He chose not to walk by sight, but by faith. Like I read in 2 Corinthians 5, 7. He chose not to walk by sight, but by faith. Now, another thing that, um, another way that Abraham is recognized, that he says, being fully persuaded, fully. Again, I think in that case, that onus is also on us. Being fully, it's, it's a choice. He, I, I believe that he spoke to himself. He, there was something inside of him that says, you know what? I'm going to believe God. I'm just going to, I'm just going to. I want this thing so so much. I want it so much, but I'm I am going to. So I believe that when he says fully persuaded, it means he convinced himself that what God had said he was going to do, he was going to do. And another key ingredient, he says, giving glory to God. I love that. Giving glory to God. He didn't just sit down there, oh God, when, oh when, 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 you know, all grumpy or grumbling or complaining. You know, we know stories like that with the children of Israel when they left Egypt and they were going into the promised land, grumbling, grumbling. No. Being fully persuaded, Abraham gave glory to God. He praised God. Now, like I said, we, there are so many things we can coin out of this and emulate. After all, he's called the father of our faith, right? So number one, you don't want to waver at God's promise. You don't want to stagger. You don't want to be, you know... I don't know. I don't know. You said this thing. I'm like 10 years. You said that you will give me a husband and I'm five years into it, 10 years into it. He staggered not. Secondly, he had a good attitude. He gave glory to God. He praised God regardless. And also, if you read the story, you see that he kept fellowship. He didn't give up. He didn't quit. He didn't say this God, this thing doesn't work. He gave glory. He stayed in fellowship with God. He would constantly build an altar and fellowship with God. He talked with God a lot and he stayed in faith. And I'm wondering if all those times he didn't feel tempted to say, God, when, you know, I mean, how can I be hanging out with you and this need not being met? You know, you can just snap your finger. Why are you taking so long? The Bible doesn't say that he questioned God that way, that he, you know, he, you know, he was in that, he, he, he was caught up in that situation. The Bible says he staggered not. He gave glory to God. He was fully persuaded. If you don't hear anything today, I want you to hear that. Actually, I want you to hear everything, but I want you to let that sip in your spirit. He was fully persuaded. He wavered not. He didn't have, he wasn't doubting what God had said and he gave glory to God, right? And the Lord will help us in Jesus name. Another scripture here says, it's in, it's in Isaiah 40, 31 it says, those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not grow weary. They shall walk and not faint. Those who wait on the Lord. Remember, we're talking about now the enemy of our faith. So if you see the common denominator in all of the scriptures is waiting on the Lord. Waiting versus now, now, now. Give it to me now. Waiting on the Lord. Patience. Patience. Endurance perseverance, 
that's how the Bible, different um, um, verse, um, versions of the Bible give that description. Patience, perseverance, endurance. Why, why would the word endurance be there? The word endurance is there because you're going through something you really do not like as a human being, you know, in our human nature, it's not comfortable. Now you say, okay, what well, if God is God almighty, why does he have to make us wait? I, to be honest, I have asked that question, Lord, why do I have to wait? Now, one thing I want to tell you is he says, if you read some scriptures in the Bible, it says it produces character waiting Patiently waiting or enduring produces character, right? Produces character. Now, for us, that need is like the most, it's like that's, that, you know, it's sometimes a need can be like your whole world at that point in time, right? It's interesting how when that need is solved, then another thing is your whole world. But let's just stay with this one need, right? Let's, let's just make reference. So that need, it feels like your whole world at that point in time right? But remember, God sees the bigger picture. All you know is at that time, I just want to get married, or I just want a baby, or I just want this infirmity or sickness to go away, or I just want my child to act right, or I just want a job right now, or I just want my spouse to act right right now. Why do I have to wait? But remember, like I said, God sees the bigger picture, you know, one of the things we struggle in life is that it, we, as humans, we always think it's about me. We really do, even though we might not say it. You know, but God, God, God has a bigger picture. Now, one thing I want to challenge you: What if your your trial or whatever it is you're going through or waiting on God for is tied to one person's destiny in the future? Maybe their life. Maybe you stopping them from committing suicide. Maybe millions. You never know. You never know what God has in store for you. So when you're waiting on God and he's molding that character, just say, Lord, I surrender to you. I admit this doesn't feel comfortable. It doesn't really make sense to my human mind, but I trust you. Those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not grow weary. They shall walk and not faint. I trust you. I trust you. I know you got my back. I know that you're looking out for me. I know that you've heard me. You have to know that God has heard you when you pray. You have to know. You have to know that God, God is, looks out for you. Okay? And the Lord will help us. He would help us. Praise the Lord. Now, there's one final scripture I have here. It says, Hebrews 6.12, Be imitators of those who inherit the promise through faith and endurance. They inherit the promise through faith and endurance. A lot of us are bought a breakthrough because now, give it to me now. And then you begin to think, oh, this faith thing, I don't even know if it works. Then you start complaining, then you mess it up. Then you start having attitude, then you mess it up. Then you start getting cranky, then you mess it up. Sometimes people even go as far as going to seek help somewhere else. They might go to um, all sorts of places, right, that are anti-God to seek help, and they ruin the whole thing. Meanwhile, you don't know how close you were at that point in time to your breakthrough. You could have been a day away from your breakthrough. Let us not let the enemy lie to us, okay? The number one thing he wants is for you to lose focus. It's for you to lose focus, not to trust in God. You understand? To dwindle in your faith, to waver, waver, to, to have doubts, to not be patient. I know that patience doesn't feel good, but trust. you have to trust God enough to sit there and, and just and hold on to him, hold on to his promise. Like I shared in the past, make sure whatever you're going through, you have a Rema word. A Rema word is just a word that the Lord leads your heart to and leads your spirit to. And then you hold on to that scripture and say, God, this is what your word says. No matter what's going on around me, I'm going to trust this word. It could be one word. It could be some, it could be a couple of scriptures that all back each other up, right? But that, those are the scriptures you're going to hold on to. Secondly, keep your joy. I know it's, it feels like it's easier said, but I'm telling you, if you magnify God in your situation, if you hold on to that promise, if you choose not to walk by size, if you get fully persuaded, like 
father, our father in the Lord in faith, Abraham did, you will be able to keep your joy. Ex um, make God big. Uh, magnify God in your situation. Magnify God in your situation. Okay, magnify. Don't keep whining. The more you talk about a problem, the more you're kind of just going to be in that cycle. It, you, you, you make, you feel it more. I, I'm talking to you now as a real person. You're going to feel that pressure more. You're going to feel frustrated more. Okay, so just worship God, spend time in God's presence and give him praise. Study the word, walk in love, walk in love. Sometimes also that might be the thing that God is really testing you on. Okay. So it's not just God wants to see your love walk. He wants to, and that's one of his major commandments. Even though people don't talk about, we talk about giving money and all those things, but walking in love is very key to God. Your heart has to be pure. You have to walk in love. If you want to get your breakthrough soon, if you want that um, endurance to be quicker, make sure your love walk is up there. Look for somebody else to minister to. Be kind to others. You understand? Be a blessing. So we sit into somebody else's life. Do you understand? So while you're walking out, um, and, um, you're, you're waiting patiently for that breakthrough, make sure you're walking. Even if it's a long time, be consistent. Do you understand? Keep up your heart. Be consistent. Walk in love and walk in um, endurance, right? Walk in patience. You understand? Uh, there's a saying, they say, uh, uh, delay is not denial. That's true. God is faithful. God will honor his word. I, his word. As long as what you're asking for will not, curse, will not cause harm to you or somebody else, or you're not asking for that for, um, based on a, an evil intent, or you understand, or you know you want to do evil with it, or you want to do bad with it, God will meet you at the point of your need. He is faithful. So I want to encourage you. I understand waiting on the Lord is not that. I've had to wait. I've had to wait for um, every, all the beautiful things I actually enjoy in my life. I, I waited a little bit, you know. <laughs> I've had to wait. I've had to wait for work. I, I've had to wait. I waited a little bit for babies, you know. So everything, God is faithful. Everything um, that I have enjoyed I've had to wait, you know, sometimes a little bit longer, sometimes shorter. But I want to assure you that God is faithful, okay? What he did in my life, he will do in your life. Do you understand? So God is faithful. Be encouraged. Be strengthened. Don't waver, okay? Um, you know, and just know that other Christians, you're not the only one. You might be waiting on one particular thing. But trust me, every single person has something that they're waiting on and they want those answers right now. You know, but we're not going to let now still our faith or now still our results okay if we can go past god has to grant that request right now we will get our breakthrough mixed with love i can't help but say that if you have faith you mix it with love and you resolve to be to have endurance and patience you will get your breakthrough now there are certain times that god brings the answers right away you understand and i'm always so happy but when, when I don't see, I just, I will just continue to speak the word. Even if I don't see the answers right, I continue to speak the word. God, you're faithful to your promise. What you have said, you will do. You know, I continue to speak God. I continue to trust God. I'm not going to dwell on it. I'm not going to magnify that problem in my mind. I'm not going to start having a bad attitude and being mean to people. You know, I'm not going to start complaining. You understand? And God always comes through. I'm speaking to you from the bottom of my heart. He would come through for you. If what you're asking is in his will, if you're, what you're asking is not going to be a stumbling block to you or to somebody else, God will come through for you. Okay? Praise God. Lord, I just want to thank you for an awesome time just a time of fellowship and I thank you that you are here and you you're always here and you minister to us I pray for my brother and sister on the other end Lord you know their difficulty you know what it is they've been waiting for you maybe a day maybe two maybe years God almighty God of power and glory I pray that you meet that need 
Lord, I pray that you do a speedy work, oh God. Strengthen them, oh Lord, even through this experience, oh God. I pray for a breakthrough. I pray for open doors. I pray that you make a way, Lord. And I pray above all that their hearts will be fully surrendered to you, that their, their faith will grow in you, oh God. Father, that they will realize now it's not just about the things that we need. It's about our focus on you. It's about our faith in you because we will always need things as human beings. Lord, I pray that we would see they would have a bigger vision and they would see things from your perspective. Lord, that in all of these things, oh God, your name will be glorified. I thank you that you hear. I pray that anyone, everyone who has sat with me, Lord, that they will not leave the same. Lord, give them a breakthrough soon, oh God. Meet them at the point of their need, oh God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 I'm happy for you already. I can see your breakthrough coming. God is faithful. He really is. You know, I think... Oftentimes, the thing is that we don't understand all of God's ways, but spend time studying the word, okay, and study other people's experiences that maybe have gone through something similar to yours. You know, it, make, it gives you insight onto how God operates, okay, and the Lord will bless you. Thank you for your time. Thank you for being just um, taking time to listen. God bless you and enjoy the rest of your day. I'll see you soon again. God bless. Bye bye.